Well, good morning. I'd like to welcome everybody to worship this morning, especially all the visitors that are out there, uh, both in person as well as online. Would encourage everybody to fill out one of the little attendance cards that's there in the pew for you, both members and visitors alike. For members, it lets us know you're here so we don't send you a letter because we accidentally didn't think you were here because you don't fill out the card. So that's the key, to fill out the card, that way we know you're here. For visitors, here's the promise I give you. If you're worried about filling out that card, we don't do anything with the card unless you tell us to. You tell us to do something with it by checking where it says interested in membership. So if you check that, that simply says to me, please give you a phone call. If you don't check it, we don't do anything with the information on there. So that's the promise I give you. We don't add you to email lists, we don't call you, that kind of stuff like some places do. Um, but the other purpose of that card is on the back side it lists this is what we believe the Lord's doing for us as a church in the Lord's Supper and so if you agree with the statements on there you're more than welcome to come up and take with, uh, communion with us today the card like I said you fill it out you drop it in the offering plate when that goes around later uh, for the Lord's Supper we offer several options one of the options is an in the pew option if you wanted that hopefully you would have grabbed one of the little kits on your way in just like we offer options back there between grape juice and wine gluten-free hosts and regular hosts we offer the same options up here uh, so we have gluten-free hosts that will be in individual cups up here then we'll have pastor Craig distributing the regular hosts one of the elders will distribute individual cups of wine or grape juice the grape juice is yellow and then I'll be at the very end with the common cup which has wine in it the Lord turns uh, with that bread and wine in with and under that bread and wine he also gives us his body and blood uh, so that's our belief as Lutherans in the Lord's Supper um, otherwise service is pretty straightforward today we're very blessed to have Randy Bozeman who's going to be accompanying Gene and singing for us with all the songs uh, so it gives us just a little bit different take on some of the songs uh, but it's a fun take and so hopefully you enjoy that and we're blessed after service to have a baptism this morning for little Evelyn I got it right right Evelyn right Yep, for little Evelyn. Uh, so we're going to do that right after the service. But otherwise, how about we stand up and greet each other, and then we'll get things going. Well, blessings now as we sing our opening song this morning, Onward Christian Souls.
please rise for the invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless, but the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever, your God, O Zion, to all generations. Praise the Lord. Let us now confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray together. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be of one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our readings. The first reading is from Acts chapter 6, verses 1 through 9 and 7, 2a. 51 through 60. Now in these days when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty but we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Procurus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Silica and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia, before he lived in Haran. <clears throat> you stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, 
you always resist the Holy Spirit as your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered. You who received the law as delivered by angels did not keep it. Now when, you, when they heard these things, they were enraged and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. The epistle reading is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants long for the pure, pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow up to salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone, chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumbled because they disobey the word as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy.
Please rise for the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, that where I am you may also be. And you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him as you have seen me. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you so long, and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am <clears throat> that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and the greater and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now confess our common faith in the triune God using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end, and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn. And just a reminder in the last verse, uh, the kids that want to join the youth uh, children's sermon, uh, you can make your way out during the last verse over to that end. So.
Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. So we're going to kind of talk a little bit about all three lessons today, but I want to hone in on our gospel lesson, and especially a couple key things in our gospel lesson. So let me reread you a couple of the verses, starting with verse 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you would have known my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. A little later, verse 10. Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. How many of you out there would agree with me this morning that you are creatures of habit? Anybody? Creature of habit? You have kind of your normal habit in the morning when you wake up, maybe your normal routine. Anybody uh, brush your teeth right away? Okay, there's a few of there like me. Okay, good, yeah. I use mouthwash. If I'm lucky, I remember to brush my teeth later. I brush my teeth at least once a day. my wife, by the way, over there. Okay, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Habits. Whether we realize it or not, we may have physical habits that we do. Um, this is from a Greek term, or, or even, a, well, actually, this is a Latin term, habitus. Our habitus is how we live our lives. We normally think of that in terms of physical things. But there's another type of habitus. A mental Habitus, a mental habit. We, whether we realize it or not, we're not just creatures of habit in what we do, we're also creatures of habit in how we think. So, for instance, if you go for counseling somewhere, there's not only behavioral habit training, where they make you change your behavior. But there's another type of counseling called cognitive behavioral therapy, where they focus on changing your thinking habits. We don't always apply this, though, to faith. And yet that's exactly what Jesus is doing constantly in the Word. Remember, He is the Word of God. And He has sent numerous prophets throughout the Old Testament to talk to his people and they constantly keep saying the same thing from God. You stiff-necked people. Anybody ever said that to their spouse before? It was never said to me. You don't change. You didn't change at all. I know where I'm sleeping tonight. Okay. There's a point. I believe me. There's a point. Okay. Yeah. So if you could imagine your spouse saying that to you, imagine God saying that to you. But not just to you. To generation after generation after generation. Now the 30th or 40th generation in line that God has said these same 
exact words to. You stiff-necked people. Why? Why not only was Jesus upset with his disciples that they didn't fathom what he was talking to them about, Thomas and Philip. Why when Stephen, Stephen who was one of those newly elected deacons, he uses those same exact words in our first reading today. You stiff-necked people. Peter, in his epistle letter, our second reading for today, he seizes on the same idea. What is it that we don't get, that we have a habit of not getting. Grace. Grace. You see, in our world today, everything is not based on grace. Everything is based on manipulation. Okay, I'm going to do this for you, but now you're going to do this for me, or you owe me, right? That's how the world works. I did something nice for you, and now I'm going to call in your debt. It might be 20 years later, but 20 years ago, we might be in the middle of an argument and you pull out something that from 20 years ago you said, remember when I did this thing for you back then? You better shut up now. That was not about my wife. She doesn't do that to me, okay? No, not at all. (laughs) But we do this in arguments. This can be done in families. This can be done with parents and children. This can be done with relatives. This isn't grace. This is manipulation. This is gaslighting. But this is what we know. This is our habit, our habitus of thinking. Is it any wonder that if that's our everyday habit, it comes in and invades our faith? that we think somehow we are going to manipulate God. God's very different. God's ways are not our ways, he says. As the heavens are high and above, so are God's ways. Ours are nothing compared to him. He doesn't do things to manipulate us. He does things out of love and total love for us. To the point that he came down and willingly died on the cross. Not so that he could use that as a bludgeon to smack you upside the head with, as an ace of spades to pull out in every argument and say, well, I died for you. Kind of like we do in those arguments. Remember 20 years ago when I did this for you? Better shut up now. Better listen to me. Better do what I say. No, that's not why he died on the cross. He died on the cross because he wanted us to be saved. He died on the cross to change our eternal destiny because we can't change it and we won't. That's grace. Grace isn't just a partial thing in terms of faith. Grace is 100% of our faith. We receive something that we do not deserve, we cannot deserve. And in order to understand that, we have to change our habitus. I'll give you an example of this. In cognitive behavioral therapy, when you're depressed, anybody here ever been depressed? You don't have to raise your hand if you don't want to, but if you want to. uh, You know, depression, one of the biggest signs of depression is it's hard to get out of bed. The deeper you drive into depression, the worse it is to get up in the mornings. The world seems like it's going to impale you if you get out of bed. If you take those covers off, you lay there, you look at the clock, you get mad at yourself, but you keep sleeping. So in cognitive behavioral therapy, one of the first things they do is they say, okay, you set a schedule, we're going to set a schedule for you. At 7 a.m., you get out of bed. First thing you're going to do is take a shower. Second thing you're going to do is brush your teeth. Maybe it's flipped. I don't care. Um, You're going to do these things. You're going to do these 10 things. So that by 9 o'clock in the morning or 8 o'clock, whatever the schedule is you worked out, it's a habit. But as you do it each day, guess what? You have a new habit. 
And this new habit, physical habit, starts to impact your mental habit. Because no longer are you thinking to yourself all those terrible things that kept you tied down and trapped in bed. You're thinking, well, my schedule says I have to get up at 7 o'clock. I have to get out of the bed at 7 o'clock. What am I going to do? Hit the snooze bar and sleep to 7.30, right? No. You get up. This is what we do in the faith. This is why we encourage you to come to church as often as you can, to hear God's word as often as you can, because God's word is changing your thinking. And the act of coming to this place or another place, the act of hearing God's word regularly, making it part of your daily life, this is a life-defining habit. It nurtures your faith. A few weeks ago, you heard me tell you a sermon about how I wish there was a little blue pill. This is our, not blue pill, sorry, that's a different blue pill. Yeah, um, <laughs> we'll call this one a purple pill, okay? That if you took this purple pill, you are going to instantly lose weight in like two weeks' time. You will be skinny, and not only will you be skinny, you will be ripped, right? So you take this purple pill, and everybody suddenly looks like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <gasps> running around yeah you know just because you took this purple pill we everybody dreams of this this is what they market to us all the time right that's not reality you want to be in shape you have to have good habits you have to eat well you have to work out this is why most of us look like this we don't have good habits right in Wisconsin we want to have stuff that's fried all the time. If it's not fried, it's not good. That's our habit of thinking, right? Yeah. Who wants to work out when you can sit in your recliner with your feet up watching television, right? And think about working out. Yeah. My point being, faith is just like our bodies. If faith is not nurtured, if faith is not encouraged, if we aren't pointed regularly to what our Savior did for us, other things creep in. Earlier I talked about manipulation. When we're exposed to the world and we're exposed to it every, just about every moment of every day, every moment we're not in the Word of God, we're not hearing that Word of God, we're hearing the Word of the world. When we're exposed to that word day after day and we hear day after day, here's a way to manipulate you. You go into the grocery store. We see this. They put all the great stuff on the end caps, right? They don't put the stuff that's healthy. I mean, I've never seen on the end of the end caps kashi or uh, some of these things, although I wouldn't think that's healthy anyway. That's like eating sandpaper, right? You guys even know what kashi is? Is it some type of seaweed or something? It's marinated in some type of urine and stuff. I, I, I'm just messing, okay? <laughs> Too far, okay. My point being, okay. My point being, I woke up really awake this morning, okay. Um, <laughs> they put all this stuff on the end cap that's not good for you. They put all the stuff on the end cap that they want to grab your attention with. That's what happens in the world. We're being manipulated 24-7 when we're hearing the message from out there. Jesus has a very different message. A message not of manipulation. A message not of making you and using you or manipulating you. He has a message that's all about sacrifice. And his sacrifice. He doesn't point you to yourself and say, you need to get yourself into heaven. He says, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one gets to the Father except through me, except through what I did for you and what I'm doing for you today and tomorrow and every day. This morning, after our service, we're going to be putting those words into practice for little Evelyn. For little Evelyn, she's going to be given that promise in the water and the word that is spoken and poured over her head. She's going to be told in this new habit that she is defined in a new way by our God. 
that he claims her as his child, that he loves her so much he attaches her to his death and resurrection. And that from that moment of that promise, in fact, that promise is already being heard by her as the word, she's hearing it right now. That she, just like all of us, every day Jesus is washing us of our sins in his blood. Every day he is bringing to life a new Adam or a new Eve. Not because we kept ourselves without sin, but because he nailed our sin to the cross. My encouragement to you is this. To support that grace, try a new habit. A habit of reading his word as often as you can. Of listening to it on the radio if you can't read it at the book. Of coming together here as often as you can or in another congregation out there. To hear God's word. The word that changes our thinking. That transforms our minds, our hearts, our souls. And here's another habit. Much like we sang in the song, Here I am, Lord, send me. To have that kind of thinking. We don't live our lives anymore for us. We live our lives each day for him. This is a totally different way of thinking in our world, a different habit or habitus. The world says, think about number one. Jesus says, I'm sending you to go do my Father's work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds to faith in Christ Jesus and to life everlasting. The part in his peace and his joy. Amen. I invite you to rise now as we sing, I believe, the next two verses of our song. If she wants to have a seat, we'll collect her off.
rise now for the prayers of our church. So our special prayers this morning, we continue to pray for the family and friends of Don Collins, who was laid to rest yesterday. And we also continue to pray for Gail Tremel and Emma Healing, Hayes Jaden and James Smithwick, Ronnie Sufain Fontaine, Katie Hayes, Kyle Fays, David Steinfeld, Brandy Lefave, Pat Mathieu, for Melody and for Marie, for Michael Lampy and Michael Funk, for Patty Fry, for Paul, for Michelle Phillips and Faye Perdell, Peggy Measler, for Haley Batten, and Bill Rush. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, as we come before you this day, we give you thanks, Lord, for your voice that calls us out of darkness, for your word that opens our eyes to something greater than ourselves, that changes our hearts and minds from stiff-necked people into your children, because you declare it. We give you thanks for the new birth that you're going to give to little Evelyn this morning, Lord, and pray that you hold her in that baptismal grace as she is taught your word and learns it throughout her life, as you draw her closer to you through the work of your Holy Spirit. Lord, guide her in life always to the cross, to what you've done for her there, Lord, and to give her hope there. We pray also, Lord, that you would give us all hope and that same promise, that your word, Lord, points us to what you declare concerning us, that your son died for all our sins and rose to conquer death and the devil on our behalf. We pray, Lord, that you would help us live our lives like Stephen each day, not for our own glory but for yours, to speak your truth, Lord, your word, that it would go out into the world and change hearts, minds, and habits for you. We lift up, Lord, the Collins family in the midst of their pain, pointing them again to that hope, Lord, that because your tomb was empty, so shall their loved ones one day. But we, Lord, also pray for those who need your healing yet in this world. Be with them as they battle against sickness and pain. If it is your will, grant them healing and full recoveries. But, Lord, not our will, but your will be done. If they are to suffer, give them hope in the midst of that suffering. In fact, use their suffering to bring others hope. If they are to be healed, Lord, then help your word to be on their lips the rest of their days. But no matter what, Lord, strengthen their faith and help them know that you are with them through it all. And so we lift up these prayers to you in Jesus' name and as he has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. For those of you who are going to commune out there in the pew, if you please would take out your little cups and uh, hold them up in front of you at this time. Welcome to the Lord's table. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, and when he had supped and given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. For those communing in the pew, please take, eat, and drink the very body and blood of Christ given for you. The rest of the congregation can have a seat.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you all into life everlasting. Depart in God's peace and in his joy. Amen. We sing our closing hymn tonight, go, or this morning, Go My Children With My Blessing. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Well, again, I do want to thank you all for coming and worshiping with us today, especially visitors out there. Hopefully you felt welcome and you are invited back at any point in the future. A uh, couple things in terms of draw your attention to in terms of announcements. First, let's thank Gene and um, Randy. My brain left me for a second. Gene and Randy, they did a great job for us today. You don't know how hard it is to play like two different instruments in kind of different settings. So they did a great job tying that together and uh, gave us some different sounds today. So that was great. Uh, you might have noticed there's been a change in our bulletin, our announcement bulletin. It's the same bulletin, same information. It's just the format change. We, instead of a folded up bulletin, we now have it fold, uh, front like this, full sheet. And uh, if there's any second sheet, they're stapled to it. Um, it's just easier, makes the, the job easier putting it out there. Plus, I think we can get more room are more things into it this way than we were the other way. And the machine, our, our new copier, takes forever to fold things. Uh, so it added like a half hour onto the job just waiting for the machine to be done. So uh, that's why we're changing our format. So hopefully I encourage you, grab one of these announcement bulletins back there. There's a lot of stuff in it. Uh, some of the stuff to highlight, I'm going to hand it over to Craig and he'll talk about uh, a couple things with the youth. Uh, just a couple of quick things. Tonight we have a youth group. Uh, get together. It's from 6 to 8 p.m. We're going to meeting, be meeting in the back garage. 
Um, we're going to have burgers and hot dogs and chips and whatever else anybody might bring. Uh, six to eight, so we'll do have something to eat. We'll do Bible study and then about an hour of just fun hanging out time. So any high school youth that would like to join us, please let me know just so I have a good idea of how much to make. Um, if you have, if you're on our Life Hour Snapchat group, you can Snapchat me. Otherwise, just catch me at the back and let me know. Uh, that's going on tonight. Um, I know there's other stuff I'm supposed you to tell you. have one more spot for... Oh, yeah, we have one more spot on our mission trip, which is in the last full week of July. Uh, so we have one more spot for one youth for that. So if anybody's interested in that, that's anyone having finished sixth grade to having finished their senior year uh, is eligible to go. So letting you know about that. Um, one quick note for next week, we're actually going to do our um, contemporary service next week, the second week, instead of the third week because um, of timing issues. Uh, so next week will be contemporary. Yep. I think that's all I got for you. So. Okay. Uh, for prayer chain, if anybody wants or has something or somebody that we've been praying for on the prayer chain, please resubmit that starting today, or if you've already done it, that's great in the last couple of weeks, uh, but we're doing a whole new prayer chain. They're kind of wiping the slate and starting over just to make sure everything is up to date. Uh, so again, please resubmit your prayer request for our prayer chain, and that way they know for sure everything's up to date, and uh, that's just kind of be the practice going forward. Every year in May, it'll be a whole new prayer chain. Uh, you have another? The Chosen. Oh, the uh, Chosen Bible Study. So this afternoon, the second Chosen Bible Study, that's from 4 to 6. I'm not exactly sure if it's Fellowship Hall or in this room over here, but if you come, it'll be in one of those spots. Yeah, anybody is welcome. Sure. Okay, yep, anybody is welcome for that, 4 to 6. Autumn, did you have something? And so the few of us will be wearing I Love Toyota shirts uh, for the remainder of May because you collected so many. There's not just, the, the jugs aren't just full. There's under the table. Uh, the, the pop tabs are flowing over. There's a plethora. So again, thank you for those. Uh, we probably will keep a container out going forward just if anybody wants to bring pop tabs in because the Ronald McDonald House is a, a great, great ministry that's out there. So, uh, But thank you all for supporting that and participating. Uh, last thing, any birthdays today? So somebody's getting a point. Marv has a birthday? Okay, so we'll sing happy birthday to Marv. Anybody else? Anybody who got pizzas from my family for the soccer, please see my family after service and they'll get them to you. But we got Marv that we're going to sing happy birthday to. So here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Marv. Happy birthday to you. And many more. That's right. All right, Craig and I will greet you back. You guys have a great and blessed week. And there's lots of eggs. Lois has lots of eggs, she said. <laughs>